Hello and welcome to part two, continuing our discussion on certificate authorities and trust issues on the web. Uh, we're looking at Amazon in Firefox. Now the only really way I can tell that I'm on an encrypted connection is I have HTTPS here and I've got this little blue box which doesn't really imply anything to me here. It's kind of, I don't know, it, it doesn't seem like it's really standing out here. Uh, but I can click this and get about as much information as I did in Internet Explorer. The interesting thing here with Firefox is, like we said, they have their own search store, so uh, I can come in here and I get a different view now of, of their certificate. It's all the same information, uh, it's just not using that you know generic Microsoft certificate viewer like, uh, like IE and Chrome were, um, but it's all, it's all the same information, it's all there. But very interesting thing that Firefox and Opera, you know, maintain their own certs. So when you download the product, you're actually getting those certs that they, you know, they say you should trust um, with the download, and then it's all it's all there. It's all maintained separately. Interesting thing though to keep in mind uh, if you're using these in a corporate environment, uh, if you've got you know Windows users that are also using Firefox or Opera. Um, and they're having issues, uh, especially if you're using uh, self-signed certs from your organization. Uh, if you import it, you know, into uh, Internet Explorer, for example, uh, and you think that you're trusting that certificate now, well, you have to do it for the other browsers as well because it's a separate store. So, something to keep in mind there. So, our uh, example of Amazon then. So. You go in there to shop and uh, buy a bunch of crap and give them your credit card number. So, you know, essentially that means you trust Amazon because you've given them that your, your credit card info. Uh, as we saw, Amazon uses VeriSign. So, basically, you're trusting them too because VeriSign is telling you that yes, this is an Amazon server that you're on um, and not some, uh, some other, you know, fake website or something like that. Uh, but VeriSign was bought out by Symantec a while ago. So now you indirectly trust them because now they own all the uh, CA servers and things that signed and issued those certs. And then depending on what browser you use, uh, you know, you're trusting Mozilla or Microsoft or whoever, whatever browser you're using uh, and whatever store, cert store they're using, you're basically trusting them to have those certificates in there to uh, tell you that, yeah, this is, this is all good and we trust this so that the session is set up. So you can see it becomes kind of a convoluted um, kind of mess of trust here that most people don't think about, and you know even even us in the security world, you know, going to a site. How often are you really thinking about all this behind the scenes stuff? You know, like I go to a site and I'll look for HTTPS and in, in that type of stuff in the address bar, but you know I'm not really thinking about this every time I go out there. So something kind of interesting. So now we'll move on to extended validation certs. Uh, so in 2006, some of the leading SSL or uh, some of the leading certificate authorities got together and uh, had a discussion that there was some declining trust in the certif the uh, security of the web, and so they got together to try to decide what to do about it. And so mind you, instead of getting together and saying, you know, we're gonna we're gonna up our procedures and we're really going to beef up security on our systems and everything else to prevent any breaches you know we're going to do all this stuff and go out there and kick ass every day and really restore everybody's trust and everything like that instead they gave us this this extended validation cert which is really just another product now uh, the idea is there's more rigorous checks done by the certificate authorities uh, according to VeriSign's site uh, this requires a legal opinion letter beyond their normal checks uh, if you read a little bit further they say well okay yeah but we also do a little more checking as far as you know the uh, your employment with the company that's requesting this and your authority to request this on their behalf and that sort of stuff but it doesn't this kind of seem like this is something they should be doing anyway I mean this this kind of reminds me of an old Jerry Seinfeld joke uh, where he's, he's talking about an airplane that's late and it finally shows up and everybody gets on Captain says you know we apologize for being late uh, but don't worry, we're going to make up some of the time in the air. And Jerry says, well, that means that means you could be going faster. Why aren't you going as fast as you can all the time? And that's kind of the same thing with, with this idea of extended validation certs. 
It's like, why aren't you doing everything you can every time? Isn't that your, you know, what you should be doing? Isn't that kind of your job? But of course, this is an excellent opportunity to make some more money because uh, the extended validation search typically costs much more than, than your regular search. So it's a good money-making scheme. So I can see why they did it. Uh, seems a little underhanded, though. Uh, so we can go into the browsers again and take a look at an extended validation search. So now we're going to PayPal, and we're going to start with IE again. So here's the difference. You can see that we've got the green address bar now, uh, and that's telling us that there is this extended validation cert. So basically what happened is PayPal paid a little more, jumped through the hoops, got the uh, certificate, and now my address bar is green. Uh, and now this is green as well. Other than that, I mean, there's really no difference. We can go in and look at the cert. There's not a lot here to, to tell us that it is an extended validation cert other than this, uh, this issuing um, server here. That's because it's called the extended validation SSLCA. Other than that, there's not a lot of difference. Um, something interesting, and I'm going to talk about SSL strip here in a little bit, uh, but we've also got the lock icon down here. And if you look down here, again, here's the, the VeriSign um, graphic that I talked about earlier. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, and uh, when I talk about SSL strip here, um, I, I did a, an example of PayPal last semester with SSL strip. And even when you're not using an encrypted connection to PayPal, this lock icon is still here, which I thought is kind of funny. I mean, it's just like the VeriSign thing down here. I mean, it's, it's useless. It's just there to make people feel good, but it's not really actually doing anything. Oops. Some of my uh, toolbar got in the way down there, so if there's a little glitch in the video, I think it paused for a second while I was trying to get this, uh, trying to get it out of my way so I could get to Chrome here. So sorry about that. Uh, looking at the extended validation cert in Chrome, kind of the same deal. We got the green, green box over here. Uh, Chrome was already using the green HTTPS and the green padlock icon anyway. Uh, so again, the only real difference is just a little bit extra green. It's really not doing a whole lot again. And Firefox is similar. Now we got a green box instead of the, the little pale blue color um, and green icon here. But that's really about it as far as the uh, visual cues. So now we're going to be moving on and talking about some of the notable attacks. Um, some of these attacks are directly on the CAs. Some of them are on the encryption. Uh, the first one we're going to be talking about though is an attack on the client. Now these aren't, this is by no means a comprehensive list of the types of attacks or attacks that have happened in the past. These are just some uh, some examples I'm giving. The attacks on the CA is a little more recent and uh, the attack on encryption is a little more recent so I wanted to kind of cover those but th there's definitely been some other um, major incidents around all of these so uh, just be aware of that. Uh, first one then is the attack on the clients so basically we're gonna get in there and view the data before it's encrypted so, I mean, there's things like key loggers where you can see what they're typing, even though it's going encrypted across the internet, you're, you're stealing it right off the machine itself. Uh, SSL strip I mentioned earlier is a really interesting one. This is a tool written by Moxie Marlinspike, and uh, the, the purpose of it is uh, once, once you've attained man in the middle, so it requires a man in the middle attack, uh, and you need to be able to see the traffic flowing. but once you do that, you just set up this tool, and it's really easy. And uh, I, I have put a link here, and uh, I'll put that in uh, in my post as well. Um, that's a link to my demo of the tool from last semester, so you can see how easy it is. It'll scare the crap out of you. Um, but basically, what it does then is, once once it's sitting in line, so it can see the traffic, it's watching for requests over port 80 uh, that are redirected to 443. So think of going to, like I said, PayPal was my example. So think of going to PayPal. Most people just type in paypal.com, right, when they're going to it. Um, 
very few people type in HTTPS colon colon slash slash or, or colon slash slash before they go out to PayPal. So what you're doing then is you're making a request for PayPal's main page on port 80, which just automatically redirects to 443. Well, SSL strip when it sees that will keep your connection to 80. It'll it'll uh, let the page return to you or to your to your client. It's going to set up an encrypted connection then over 443. Uh, so the server, it's uh, you know there's no difference there. The, the traffic looks exactly like they would expect. So there's really no good way from the server side to detect that this is going on. And then from the client side, there's some subtle clues, but you know, most people aren't really going to pick up on, like, it's just going to say HTTP instead of HTTPS up in the address bar. You're not going to, you know, if it's an extended validation cert, you're not going to have the green address bar. Um, but, you know, how many people are really going to notice that, especially because the extended validation certs aren't used everywhere, so you wouldn't just automatically think that there should be a green green bar. And I liked PayPal as an example because, like I said, that lock icon is still there right by the the login box uh, even though you're going over port 80 um, so most people you know aren't really going to think about it and so you know it just sits there then and since it's got an unencrypted connection it'll just watch for any credentials or any posts that you do um, you can capture the whole the whole session as well uh, but by default it's going to capture posts so it's going to be you know the things that the attacker is most interested in So. That's uh, that's kind of a, a nifty little attack. Uh, I really like that one. I also used that one. Uh, we did an IT expo at my job earlier, uh, or I guess not not earlier this year, just at the very end of last year. And I did that uh, as a demo because we had to come up with a presentation, and uh, it was uh, very successful because I scared a lot of people, and uh, it was kind of fun. Uh, kind of turned it into a modern version of the magic trick is this your card you know instead of playing is this your password so very interesting scared some people raised a little bit of awareness uh, so it was fun uh, the next big one obviously then is attacking the CAs themselves so this this involves hackers um, actually breaching their security systems and uh, issuing rogue certificates uh, which has happened recently uh, and was uh, the subject of quite a bit of discussion, especially around Komodo and Diginotar when they were when they were attacked. Uh, and then the third one is around uh, Beast. That was last year as well. Um, and we'll talk about that one here in a second as well. So the direct CA attacks, um, Komodo is, has a you know major share of the market here, uh, a pretty large share. Uh, and they were breached in March of 2011. Uh, fraudulent certs were issued for Google, Yahoo, Skype, add-ons.mozilla, and several others. Um, but as you can see, I mean, major sites, lots of traffic. Uh, it'd be really easy to, you know, create a domain that's really similar to those and use the fraudulent certs, or you know, just a rogue server in general. You know, there's lots of lots of things that could be done there. Uh, the in this case the root and the intermediate servers were not breached which was a good thing for them uh, but their registration authority was which is the the portion where it actually um, it does the identity checks and things so the attacker got in uh, got the password to this registration authority and that way he could request certificates and then just approve them himself uh, it was noticed pretty quickly somebody at Komodo you know they detected it pretty early um, they think it was just a matter of hours that he was in the system uh, and was able to do this. Uh, the certificates were revoked by Komodo immediately. Everybody, Microsoft, Mozilla, everybody pushed out, you know, um, some updates and things so that those weren't trusted anymore. Uh, and the IP was interestingly traced back to Iran. So then later on, we've got Diginotar, which was a uh, certificate authority in the Netherlands, uh, attacked in September. The attacker claimed to be the same one who breached Komodo, which it turns out uh, he had he had posted the same uh, Payspin account when he announced uh, from when he announced the breach of Komodo uh, to this one, um, and there were several other things that were really similar in the attack. So it's likely that this was the exact same person. Uh, but looks like I'm coming up on 15 minutes again, so I will pick this up again in part three.
Thanks.